Facebook and Instagram. Okay. Well, I'm pumped for this interview. Even, I mean, I've been pumped for every interview, but I'm super pumped to talk to you because I've never met you. Uh, you've never been to Flow Jam. Consider the source is our like, you know, Saturday night headliner. Everyone's excited to see you. I've gotten a lot of great feedback on uh, getting you on our lineup. And, you know, I've heard people all the way say from like, this is the best thing that's ever happened to our town. You know, we are so excited. And you've had a lot of fans that I didn't even know about that uh, awesome. Jam that already know about you. So they were just super stoked to see you on our lineup. Um, I'll let you introduce yourself uh, so that you can, you know, tell us who you are, tell us um, what you'll be doing at Flow Jam. And, and then I'm going to ask you some questions about your background, because I'm really interested to hear about you. Okay, well, my name is Gabriel. I'm in a band called Consider the Source. And uh, we are playing the Flow Jam and we're doing a masterclass, which is cool. Yeah. You know, we've, we've, uh, we've done a lot of classes around the world. We've done classes in India. We taught a class in Israel. We've taught at a bunch of colleges in America. Uh, we've done a bunch of festival, you know, the classes and stuff, and we all teach individually. So it's really fun. Um, you know, not, not many bands do that at festivals and stuff. So yeah. it, it's, it's a really fun thing that we get to play the set and then we get to like interact with people and stuff because we mostly open those up for questions and stuff. So um, it's always fun to hear what, what people want to know about and everything. So that's, it's a nice way to engage with everyone. So we're excited to do both of those things. Yay. Yeah. I've, um, I've conveniently, well, you know, you did have time constraints on when you could go on at, for the masterclass, but I'm, I conveniently like placed you where I know that people, um, that wanted to take your masterclass that, that would be on stage, like scheduled, like literally around so that they could make your masterclass. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. There's a lot of artists that are, um, really excited to learn from you and um, yeah, I, like that part, because, you know, as musicians, you guys are, you guys got, a lot of you have a full on tour schedule. You're coming in, coming out, and we don't often get to interact and like, you know, really meet you. So I think that's like, when I heard that you guys did that, I was so excited because it aligns so perfectly for what we're trying to do here as a healing arts festival and to like give educational uh, classes for people to, you know, really expand on their passions and, you know, have role models like yourself who, you know, has a full tour schedule and has made this your career and a pretty successful one, it looks like, as you guys are touring all over and, you know, so yeah. it's, it's cool, lucky. right? Did you ever think that you were going to be, uh, you know, this, this, you know, popular? Like what? Um, you know, we play really crazy music. And uh, when we started, n none of us uh, knew about the jam scene at all. Like we were totally, you had no idea. It was, it was me, John, our bassist, Jeff, our drummer. He joined uh, later. We had a, a drummer named Justin before that. None of us knew anything jeff our current drummer he knows jam band stuff he's our jam band guy but when we started we had no concept never heard of you know i had heard of fish but that was it i'd never heard of umphreys mcgee or disco biscuits or mo or any of these bands and i didn't know there were festivals we didn't know about any of this stuff and so we started playing this crazy you know instrumental music there weren't other instrumental bands so we thought we were gonna you know have a career because we were people responded very positively to us from the beginning, but we thought we were going to play like jazz clubs and we thought we would get some metal fans and stuff. And then all of a sudden we discovered the jam scene, you know, 10 or so years ago. And it's like, uh, man, the cool, it's like uh, such a cool thing because the, you know, you go to a metal festival, it's metal bands, right? You know, you go to a jam band festival, you go to a hip hop festival, it's hip hop. You go to a jam band festival, there's going to be some bluegrass, there's going to be a DJ, there's going to be some Americana sounding bands, there's going to be like Jamtronica sounding bands, you may have something like us totally from left field, you may have like an Afrobeat band or something, so it's really like a, 
very happy to have discovered the scene of like open-minded people and stuff, you know? And so um, that's another thing is like, you know, you go to a lot of the other festivals, they don't have the classes and stuff, you know? You go to a jam band festival and they'll have like the little tent where they're doing like lectures and stuff. And it's like, this is kind of cool, you know? And so uh, mm -hmm. we always knew we were going to have, uh, hoped we were going to have a career, but like getting to tour like this and play big venues and have like fans that drive hours to see us and stuff, playing the music that we play, we feel super, super lucky for that yeah it's yeah it's really cool i mean i also started flow jam not knowing the jam scene at all like i didn't like i came i used to live in australia and i was going to school over there and then i moved back home to my original home base in bluemont virginia and like i was inspired by uh i went to a camping festival over there in byron bay and they had like jam artists and just like all different types. But um, that really like that scene that really felt good to me. And when I came back, you know, all the things that had to align to make it happen. But yeah, when people started introducing me to like actual jam bands and fish and everything, and I was like, oh, this is, yeah, this is what that's about. Yeah, yeah. Like I based like one of our um, one of our bands that have been with us for a very long time, Budograph Spaceship well, since the beginning, they were like our, like my intro into jam bands. And then they've like introduced me to so many other artists, but um, That's cool. your, uh, yeah, consider the source is uh, we haven't had a, a headliner like you before. So we are super stoked to like bring that to our audience. And then also, you know, bring a new audience that might've not thought about going to flow jam before, but they, you know, they want to check you out. They might be more into metal music. A lot of people that come to flow jam think it's like only a yoga festival or only like jam bands or only this. And, you know, wait till you see the schedule come out because you're going to see like, all of these different, you know, varieties of workshops and variety of bands. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, so tell me like a little bit more of how you guys, your band of three, which makes it, I think that seems like a good, it's hard to keep a band together. You know, I'm realizing yeah. who I shared 10 years ago and who's still a band now, like the number is like very small. So I very small, you know, we, we, there's some friends bands of ours that we started off with and it's really cool like uh when we first started playing like us and dopapod used to play together all the time like small shows in brooklyn small shows in boston and all this and so them and some other friends uh that we started with it's really cool to be like hey like you know because when you're starting you're just like yeah we're doing this you know and then everyone's young and everyone's just playing shows yeah. and stuff and then you know, when you're not as young anymore and it's your career, you're kind of like, oh, this is pretty cool that this is my job, that it's, it's a really hard, long job, but it's it's a great job. And like, you get to see your friends like, oh man, we're doing this. This is really fresh. You know, this is not like, a, it's not an easy commitment to make. No, It's not an easy commitment to, you know, people drop off and, and you know, rightfully so. It's like, uh, but you know, if you have to do this, you have to do this. And we're a band that has to do this. You know, we play really weird music or instrumental you know so being a three piece is a good for us musically because you know all three of us take up a lot of room sonically it's very difficult i can't picture any uh there's no spaces to fill for a fourth person you know what i'm saying right now we have enough hard time figuring out how all three of us can fit together with the amount of sound that the three of us make you know so um and also you know, we all live kind of far from each other now. You know, we when we started, we were, you know, two of us were in Queens and I was in Manhattan and that was it, you know? And so we traveled, we rehearsed in Queens and that was that was the band. And now, you know, we all live about two hours from each other. So um, we can't, we don't rehearse. We can't get to do any of this stuff anymore. So, you know, being a three piece is very easy for that because like, man, it's hard enough to get the three of us together to be able to do stuff. I couldn't imagine you know, you see these bands, six, seven piece bands. I remember, you know, our friends in a nine piece band. I'm like, that's wild. I can't even imagine that. Like, you know, know. like. And we have some seven piece bands coming in. I'm just like, yeah. I have no idea how you guys are doing this. And, but you know what? They're young. They're young, They're young right? They're young. And like, <laughs> yeah. It's also just one of the things that like, we really like, we've grown up together. Me and John have been playing together since college and stuff. So we were. Wow immature kids when we met and now we're adults you know so we, we grew up in in a, in a lot of ways together like that you know learning to communicate musically and uh 
and as humans together. So it's, you know, there's a special bond. You know, Jeff has been in the band 10 years now. Like, you know, he's one of like, there's a, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty special. The, the way we get to play together and, you know, the fact that we still enjoy each other's company is great. Oh, you're going to fit right in. Yeah. It's it's like a one big family here. Yeah. Um, We've been together for a while as, as you know, 10 years too, but wait, how long have you guys actually been a band? Consider the source. 15 years, maybe. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah, maybe even more. Maybe even more because the first couple of years we were just playing together in college sometimes. We were playing in, in college. I went to Hunter in New York City and, and our John and Justin went to Queens College. And you guys studied music in college too? I studied classical music uh, in college, yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Uh, so longer than 15 years. That's impressive. That's like, do you guys- since we were very young, yeah, since we were- since we were in our very early, maybe 20 or something, 21, maybe, I don't know. Damn, that's something to be very proud of. Yeah, it's cool. The touring schedule like you guys do. So how, so living far apart and then like, how do you, like, how do you do the tours? Like, how do you plan that out? Is that like your manager's like, oh, okay, like we're going to like put you all these places and get you gigs or like, do you tell them we want to go here or... What's no, I mean, we have a man, you know, at this point we have management, we have booking agencies and we've had that for a long time. You know, our first couple tours, we booked on MySpace. That's, that's how old we are. Um, <laughs> and then, and then, you know, we went through a bunch of different booking agencies and managers and we've been, we've been, we've been settled the last like five, six years. We, we've been very happy with, you know, uh, we have a great manager named Zach. We love a lot. David, our booking agent is great and stuff. And so we have like a good, actually you. Have a good team. you. What? So you can thank him. He introduced me to you. Zach or David? David. David's great, man. Yeah, we see him every time we go to Colorado. And uh, yeah, so we really like, we know we really like our squad and everything. So, you know, we used to tour a lot more than we do now pre-COVID. Um, mm-hmm. we, were, we were gone like two to three, six week tours a year and a bunch of shows. So we were, at, when we were really young, we were doing like 200 shows a year. And then, you know, for a long time, we were doing like 130 shows a year. And now we're down to about 60 to 70 shows a year. Wow. Okay. Which is, so grateful you're coming to Flow Jam. You know, and it's interesting because it, it, it's funny to say down to 60 or 70 shows a year and just have that feel. To me, I'm like, man, we're not playing that much. And then I'm like, 60 shows a year is a lot of shows. You know what I'm saying? So it's Still like a lot a, of shows. Yeah. It, you know, it's a different sort of I thing. Can't even imagine. You know, it's like uh, our, you know, our songs are long and instrumental and um, they're not like, a, they don't fit with any like of the trends of stuff. And so like, we're a word of mouth band, you know, we're not a, like, um, we don't look cool. You know, we don't, we're not like covered in tattoos and like either that or we don't, we don't, you know, if you're, if you're playing like the technical metal stuff where we have fans from you have to be covered in tattoos wearing like all black we don't do that <laughs> um uh a lot of the jam band guys none of us wear flat brims and stuff like that so we we're not we don't fit in with any of the scenes we play eastern european metal eastern european and middle eastern influence progressive music that you can't dance to and stuff and so everything we do we got to like earn by just having people come and see us and being like okay this is this is something you know, yeah. and so we just, we got to stay out there. And, and also we improvise and so much that like um, the live thing is where it's at for us in a lot of ways. Yeah. Most of our bands are like that, I think. Cause yeah. You get the energy of the crowd as well. And just exactly like playing in nature, you know. Yeah, um, I'm a city boy as much as you possibly can be. So my only nature is when I go to festivals. I was going to say, I actually had a picture that you guys were from Philly. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I like playing Philly, but nah, nah. Jeff, <laughs> Jeff, our drummer, lives near Philly now. He's about 15 minutes outside Philly. Um, but yeah, no, uh, you know, they, the, my other two bandmates are more, they'll hike and stuff. I have about 45 minute nature window before I'm like, all right, let me get on the subway and go do something, you know, so. Really? Wow. That's interesting. I, I, every time I go to New York, my cousin lives, he used to live in Queens. Okay. And, um, every time I went to visit him, I like needed a vacation after that. Like, I was right. like yeah. Downtime. Yeah. 
And I'm uh, born and raised uptown in Manhattan, you know, so I've been used to like the the whole totally thing my whole life, you know, so. So you grew up with like all of this culture and all of this influence, which yeah. I'm sure is a product of, you know, what you're doing today as well. So how did like, what's your story behind, you know, picking up your first instrument and then like getting into this? Do you have a family? Do you have a background? Does your family, you know, uh, play or like, is this just a anomaly? That yeah, you know? no. So, um, my 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 family plays but both of my parents are in, in the art field both of my parents are uh puppeteers and they they did really? a lot of tv yeah they did a they cool. did a lot of tv shows that that people watch so people come to my house and they would see the stuff and be like oh shit you know which is really cool so they they work non-stop wow on their job you know and so it was kind of like i always knew that i was like okay if i'm in the creative thing like it's a you wake up and you work and then you, you're working till you go to bed. It's not like you have a nine to five right. and you can like leave your work at home. If you're working like the creative thing, it's like, this is, this is what you do. And, you know, and to this, you know, they've never stopped. They're still, they're still doing that, you know? Right. And so that's always my thing was like, okay, the creative arts are the hardest job in terms of the amount of work for the amount of recompensation compensation you get. But, you know, when I was doing this, my parents, they, they, I was an athlete until, and I hurt myself. And uh, as I was healing, I got really good at guitar, like really quickly over the course of like six to seven months, I went from not really playing to being able to really, really play. And uh, um, it was kind of clear that it's like, oh, this is kind of what I'm supposed to do. Like, and you know, so they were very, wow on the fence like if you work really hard you know and then they saw how pretty quickly I was working really hard and then they're very honest you know Eastern European and stuff so they're very level of honesty where if it wasn't good they're like this is not good you need to work better and then when it was good you're like you're doing wonderful so it's like it's a real uh I knew they were never lying to me about stuff you know so if it was good and they were like Gabe you're you're, you're doing well I was like fuck yeah I'm doing well and if it wasn't it's like Gabe this band's not happening I was like all right, you know, and so it's there. My parents come to all the New York City shows we play and, and stuff. It's great, and uh, you know, and um, you know, John is the same thing. John, John's father is a guitar player and stuff. So we both were lucky to come up in in that in that sort of setting of uh, you know encouragement, but also like work hard. You know, you have to. My parents were like, if there's anything else you can do, do it because this is going to be a hard life. And um, I couldn't, I couldn't think of anything else. And uh, I knew that um, I was willing to, to do the music work. You know, I'm not, being a musician nowadays is like being a small business owner and a social media manager and all this stuff that I hate to, <laughs> that goes with the music. But it's like, you can't just be, unless you play like pop music, if you play music or <clears throat> if your music fits very much in a genre, you have a, an advantage of stuff, you know, but if you're trying to do something that's even at all outside of a thing, you're, 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 especially nowadays, you really have your work cut out for you in terms of getting it out there for people. But, you know, if, if, if you can't, if nothing else makes sense, you got to do it. This is, yeah, this is totally how I've lived my life too. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't imagine, you know, doing many things. And so I've created something that uh, is really fun for me, um, but also, you know, very time consuming. And, uh, and it's not always fun. I mean, it's not fun. No, no, it's not always fun at all. But it's more fun doing the work for this, making sure you're ordering t-shirts and making sure you're doing this and then sending out advances. It's not fun, but you would have to be doing not fun stuff for any job. There's no job that's just all fun. And so again, unless, um, you know, sometimes you see a pop star or something like that, or a certain band that fits very much into the mold of metal or jam, and they they can have it easier and stuff. But you know, if you if you want to be original, you you you're not going to be able to explode like that. But that's just how it is. Not everyone wants original stuff. You know, a lot of a lot of things that are very popular are the most generic versions of something because it's like uh, easily accessible for a lot of people, and that's fine. You know, a lot of people don't want to have to think about stuff. And nor should they. They should be able to just listen to the easy music and that's fine. And then some people want to strive and, and challenge themselves into there's bands like us. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I've never seen you guys live before. And so I'm stoked 
to be able to uh, have my first experience in what I think is the best setting. Um, so yeah, and you guys are playing like, yeah, you're playing Saturday. So nice. we, uh, you'll be closing out the main stage, which is nice. Like, That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so I have a question before we like go into like what's next for you and how we can find you and all that stuff. I've been asking touring people, what is the craziest, weirdest, scariest thing that has happened to you while on tour, either on the way to an event, at the event, or leaving the event? You know, that's interesting. There's a lot. You know, there's a lot, you know, our van has, we've, you know, we've had vans break in all sorts of crazy, terrifying ways as you're driving. We've had law, we've been, we've had law entanglements getting, you know, dealing with, dealing with people getting arrested or stuff. You know, we've, we've had all sorts of, you know, we've had all sorts of stuff. Um, scare, you know, I remember... Okay, so this I wasn't very scared, but I remember once back in the day we were we were we were on tour in, in Israel, and uh, our guy made a very illegal turn, and we were getting pulled over by like plain coast cops, and no one knew what was happening, and we maybe had some stuff that we shouldn't have, and our drummer was like thought we were getting like kidnapped by terrorists and stuff, and he was freaking out at that time originally. It was that was a really I was calm though I was calm during that, but that was that was a fun like are we getting arrested in another country? I was like, I'm here for it, man. Like, I'll see, I'll, I'll go for that, you know, but- I'll see it through. I will I'll see, see it through. I've done, I've done that before. Um, that, you know, that was an interesting thing. We've, we've had just like driving down mountains with the, the brakes not working and stuff and just hoping, you know, what? these sorts of things, you know, like, yeah, you know, most of it just involves like transportation. We're we're not like a partying band, you know. We're like we're 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 the nerdy, watch cartoons, read and practice band, you know. Um, so we we don't really put ourselves in situations like that too much. But man, yeah, we've definitely, <laughs> yeah, we've, we've we've had some interesting run-ins with people, with with law, with law. You know, I've had uh, due to uh my religious background and stuff I've been interrogated in airports in other countries for probably a total about of 11 hours I've had my instruments confiscated I've had all my my belt and my shoes swabbed and I remember one year I was being interrogated in an airport in another country I won't name what country and they were like grilling me on what each of my guitar pedals was and it was so surreal they were like, distortion, what does this do? And I was like, it goes, ju -ju -ju -ju, like trying to explain to them, like, what my, just, what, what, is a phaser, what's this? And like, it swishes, you know, how am I supposed to explain this, you know, trying to explain to counterterrorism people in airports what my guitar equipment does was pretty surreal a few times, you know, so wow. we've had, we've had things. Wow. That reminds me real quick of a, a episode of, um, of, uh, what are they called? They, they, um, it's like a, a reality show about um, like the security at the airports and this guy who actually was carrying like all this cocaine came with a, a, a guitar and he had his guitar packed in his guitar, guitar case with just like a bunch of clothes. And the guys were like, this is sketchy because anybody who would take care of their instrument, like a real musician would not be like stuffing his clothes and, you know. And so then they like interrogate him about like, play the guitar for us. And then he tried to play the guitar and he like had no idea how to play it. And then they- And then that, was, that was the thing was for me, it wasn't drugs. They thought I was like a terrorist or something. And I, I kept on being like, look, I'm really good at my job. This is a really weird, like I have a six week tour booked right when I come back. What do you really think? You know, and, and so that, that was, I was trying to logically explain to different different people and just like, it's a really long con to me to be able to get as good as I am at my instrument to be able to just come here to do some, you know, some some bad shit. So, but it didn't work, that, that, that never ended up working, so. A really long con, that's, yeah. yeah. Trying to negotiate. Yeah. Okay. So 
Thank you so much for joining us. I don't want to take too much of your time, even though I feel like I could talk to you like all day. I have so many questions. I can't wait to like ask you at Flow Jam and come to your masterclass. Um, but where can we, what's up for you? What's, what's next besides Flow Jam? What's coming up um, for you? And then obviously where can we find you um, online and how do we follow you outside of Flow Jam? Yeah, you know, so we have festivals and stuff for the summer. It's not the heaviest festival summer for us, but it's, you know, we got probably 10 or so festivals happening, which is great. Um, and then in the fall, we are re-releasing an old album of ours mm -hmm. and we're going to put it out on vinyl for the first time. And uh, we're going to tour playing some old stuff from that album, which is oh, yeah. really fun. Probably get not, you know, not full country, but at least out to the middle of the country and back again this time, you know. And then we have a new album that we recorded a long time ago during the beginning of COVID. And it's just been like figuring out how to put it out and all that stuff, you know, so we're going to early next year, February, March, we have a, a, our new, our last album was half acoustic, you know, so our next album is heavier than our other stuff. So it's kind of like, you know, it's supposed to be a one, two punch pretty quickly. You know, now it's been three years because of the pandemic and everything, but, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so we have our probably our heaviest album coming out after after our latest album. And right. but before that, we're going to be reissuing an old album and uh, doing a fall tour. And then, you know, early next year, we'll be doing like, you know, full, full on album release tour. So, you know, stay tuned for those things. Um, if you are coming to Flow Jam and you want to come to the class, bring questions. You know, we ask uh, we mostly open it up for questions, you know, and we, we're on all the socials. Consider the source. We're on Facebook, consider the source. We're on Instagram. My name is Gabriel Ahmed Marin. You could find me with my my full name on stuff. Um, Instagram, John Farrar, Jeff, John Farrar bass, Jeff Man Drums. You know, that's all of us. Uh, we're all on the socials and stuff. And so, you know, if you if you like us, you can follow us on that. You know, the support really means a lot. We play such left of center music that like the fact that people show up with open ears to us really means the world to us. So just wonder really thank everyone for for listening and uh giving a chance to check us out and then coming back afterwards hopefully yeah yeah i'm i'm excited to see what what transpires and um like i said you have a lot of uh followers that already were at flow jam and we're like you're bringing consider the source and that, then that's awesome one of our artists on on our lineup um that's playing the main stage they made a comment that they were like this is, you know, three of the world's best musicians all in one band. How can you get better than that? Like, so I'm, yeah, I'm stoked. So thank you for putting this on your schedule and coming out. Um, we will see you Saturday at Flow Jam. Excellent. All right. We'll I'm gonna see you guys say goodbye on Instagram and Facebook. Bye. Thanks for joining in. All right. End it here.